Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a genie vlogger, and on today's vlog, we will be looking into the Chernick side of Sam Arano's family tree. In the last episode, we looked into the Shanker side of Sam's family tree. And one thing I want to just point out at the beginning of this episode is in that side, we have Nathan Shanker's mother is Meta Ballots. And we want to remember that because it's going to be important for today's episode. So we're going to be looking at Nathan's wife, Haya's family tree. And her part of the tree is built out pretty well, as you can see from uh, what we have. And this is what Sam has supplied to me so far. We even see that he has siblings of Chaya's father, Israel, and that's actually going to be important in a bit. Now, the family story here really starts actually with the Wasserman side. And that was when Isaac Wasserman first came over. And he came over sometime in 1905. So we're going to pull up our hints. And uh, we can see that in uh, 1920 census listed as 1908. 1930 census, it's listed as 1906. In the 1910 census, we see that it's 1907. We're getting a, a little variation, but it's all about 1906, 1907. So they were the... Isaac was the first one to arrive, and he actually arrived uh, before his kids. So if we look at the federal census, we see that Isaac's kids are William and Lewis. And then we see there's also a Marjorie Sandrowitz, who's only three. So this is them, but let's take a quick look at this. So we're going to take a look, and we see that this Marjorie is listed as a daughter, um, this would be something I would probably look into further, but one thing to note more than anything is noting that um, the birthplace for William and Lewis is listed as Ohio. Now, another interesting thing to note, and this would uh, this will go into when we're looking into their area of origin, is we see that it says Podolia, and then Rush uh, that's uh, crossed out, and then it says Russia, and then we that's birthplace of father, and then birthplace of mother. We see it says Kiev. And then that's crossed out. Um, but then when we look at the father, we do see that for his, his father's birthplace is Podolia. His mother's birthplace is Podolia. So this is actually a really good hint whenever you see this. Because sometimes what it is, is that's the place they gave. And then for whatever reason, um, census officials would change it to the much more vague sort of country so you get you know russia but we do see that isaac is a restaurant proprietor and so he really in the end is the one who was the center of this family getting to america and that's what we're going to talk about and then from there esther's sister jenny then arrived in 1909 shortly following her husband uh david and when we take a look at the census, we'll see that for the children, we did have one child, Hattie, who came in 1909 with uh, her mother, Jenny. And um, for David, he is listed as coming in 1908. But from what I found, the record I found, he actually came in 1909. It took me a while to, to find this. And I had to do a lot of manipulation with the search. But what I, I found was that this Misselman name was actually Mitzelmacher. So we know he came in 1909. So here we have it where we have David Mitzelmacher. So we're going to go down and we're going to scroll down. I know it's somewhere around here. All right. So second from the bottom, we have David Mitzelmacher. He's 30 years old, male. He's a tailor. Now this yes, yes, going all the way up, it's can he read or write? Now his nationality, he's Russian. He's Hebrew. And then for here, I believe it's, uh, yeah, last permanent address. So last place that he was living was in Odessa. So we have another place that uh, for him. So before we had Podolia, now we have Odessa. But one thing I do know is that Odessa is part of historic Podolia. But then going over, we also get the person who is 
related to them closest in the uh, last residence. So name and complete address of nearest relative or friend in country once alien came. Well, it's his wife. And it's kind of hard to read. Now, we know her name as Jenny. I'm not quite sure what it says there. Maybe somebody can comment below and let me know. But we see the name Misselmacher, Odessa. And then there's a lot that's really hard to really read. And um, if anyone can figure that out, I'd really appreciate it. But then we do see over here Cleveland. And when we scroll up, what's Cleveland? Well, it's the city of Final Destination. Well, that matches up with what we know. But does the rest match up with what we know? So going to the next page, remember, always go to the next page. Now we have who paid and where is he going? We see it's brother-in-law and which brother-in-law? Isaac Wasserman. Now we see that it's in Cleveland and it's hard to really make it out, but it looks like it says East 55th Street. So one way that we can try to confirm this is can we confirm that Isaac Wasserman was living in East 55th Street? Because if he was, we know for sure that this is the same family uh, that we were looking at before. So looking at the hints, we're going to want to look at the 1910 census. And the reason for that is because the arrival list we were just looking at was 1909. 1910 will be the closest. So here we go. We take a look and well, what is that? Isaac Wasserman living at East 55th Street, and that's exactly what we had. So we know that that Misselman, that name used to be Mitzelmacher. And the other thing to remember with this is all of these other names that we're dealing with in the family, these are the names that we have in America, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what they went by back in their home town of origin. Um, sometimes it can be small changes. So one of my families, uh, that I know is Goldberg was originally Goldenberg from what we found another family of mine that was Waxman in the U S they were Vaxer back in their town of origin. But then there are some that are a little bit, even more of a, uh, change. So one of my family sides, uh, the name was Sulinzon from what I could find. And in the U S they went by Silicon. Um, which makes a little sense. But then another side of my family, they had the last name Reimer and then they changed it to Ruben. So you can never really know quite exactly what it's going to change to. Often it'll be similar, but not always. And the next family members to come were then Joseph Chernick or what we learned was Abraham Joseph Chernick and his wife Leah. And Leah's last name from the tree that Sam gave me is Bellets. And that's going to be something to remember that we're going to go into, into in the future, especially because before we saw that on another part of his tree, there was a meta bellets. And Sam actually told me that they are said to have been related. And that's what he was told by his grandmother as well. She told him that they had the same name. But there's something that we're going to look at in a bit that shows that that's not quite what I found. So we're going to go to Joseph and now we're going to look at his. So he came in 1911. So we have a, we have what's known as chain migration, which was a big, big term a few years ago. And that's basically the idea that families would come slowly one after the other. Families couldn't always come as one. And a lot of times you would have to come in small portions. So even within the, the immediate families of the larger family, we have it where you know, Isaac Wasserman's coming over and then his wife is coming over and they were married um, based on, you know, what we had. Uh, we have David uh, Mitzelmacher, David Messelman coming over and then his wife coming over, but they were going to his wife's family. Um, next, we have Abraham Joseph and his wife coming over in 1911. And so we see that they came through Baltimore as well. A lot of the family members I found in. And so here we get another view of the family. So we have the name here. We get Joseph and Leah, 58 and 60. So she's older than he is. He's a laborer. We see they're from Kraju. Now, I could not figure out quite where they meant this was. Even for the closest uh, relative or friend from the country they came, there was just a friend, uh, Shrul Toporonsky, who was in Kiev. So does that mean that they were also in Kiev and is that Kraju place part of Kiev? Now, this is all important because when we take this 
research further, big thing will be looking at the records in the town of origin. And if they came from Kiev, well, a whole lot is being digitized thanks to the work of Alex Krakowski. So there's a very good possibility we could find that. But what do we do always with these documents? Go to the next page. But also with the manifest, make sure you note the number so we see six and seven. So of course we look six, seven, and who's paying for them? Their son-in-law, Isaac Wasserman. And where is he living? 55th Street in Cleveland, Ohio. So the Wassermans really were the central hub for the family to come. Now, the next family member that came out was Abraham Joseph's son, Israel, who is actually the ancestor of Sam. So this is how Sam is related to Abraham Joseph. And Israel came out in 1913. So for Israel... We have his manifest, 1913, and he came before his wife. So we need to see if we can find him. I know he's somewhere on here. So here we go. So here we have Israel, and then we actually have uh, his daughter, uh, who was uh, later known as Celia, and she is the ancestor of Sam. So Israel and his daughter came over together. Israel was 43. His daughter was 19. Um, we see that the, he was a tailor. I believe it says that she is a milliner, which from my understanding, I believe that they made hats. It had something to do with hats. Um, then once again, now we see Kragov. So before we saw Kraju, so we get Kragov. So could this be Krakow? I'm not sure because now here we say, here it says wife, Cherny Golda. She's from Kragov, Kiev. Now, I, I'm hoping that maybe uh, somebody may know something ab about this. I've reached out to friends of mine who research in Ukraine, so I'd imagine that they would know what this is, and it's kind of stumped them as well. Um, but once again, going back, we see Ohio, Cleveland, and then let's note the numbers, 1617, go to the next page. And who do we see brought them over? Well, cousin I Wasserman. Now he has moved. Uh, it looks like now he's at 46th Street when um, they come in 1913. But then Golda doesn't come over herself until 1921. And when she comes over, she doesn't come through Baltimore, no. She comes through Quebec. Now, here the name is spelt differently again. Um, whether or not it was ever spelt this way, I'm not sure. I think this is more the person taking the record because we'll see on the next page that it's spelled differently again. But here we get Golda. We get three of her sons, Nahum, Velvel, and Schneer, who we knew then became Nathan, William, and Charles. Uh, we get a good amount of information from them. Here it's saying they're from Romania and that they were from Bucharest. So now we have a whole nother place. So we uh, we saw Odessa before. We've gotten Podolia. We've gotten this Kragov, which could be Krakow. We don't know, uh, which is in Kiev. Now we're getting Bucharest, which is in Romania. And a very interesting thing, we get Golda's sister, Feggy Mintz, who I believe, I believe what this is trying to say is Venezia, Russia. I'm not 100% sure. The reason why I believe that is because other records indicate Golda was connected to Venezia. But this is really interesting because this is the only place I've found this sister. So that's something new to add to the tree. But of course, we see Ohio, Cleveland. And we know the last on the page, but just to make sure, 19 through 22 go to the next page and when we look 19 through 22 well we see this time they're not going to the Wassermans now they're actually going to Israel Chernik um, it says father uh, that's actually the father of the children um, this is actually her husband so I think that was just kind of a mistype and then we don't really get anything that special we do see the Russia here I think like I said I think that's supposed to be Venezia I'm not sure because that's a big L. Um, but then also, I don't know what there's meaning by this place, Gus Visser. 
So uh, if anyone has an idea about that, please comment below as well. Um, but this is place of birth as well. So this could be very important because then we could find metric records if they're available, birth records. So now this is something really interesting to think about with the family. We have a varied timeline of when they're arriving. It's very clumped up and then all of a sudden Golda comes later. And well, I think that gap is quite easily explainable with one major world event, World War I, or what was known then as the Great War. And that even plays into why the family were coming through Baltimore before, but then all of a sudden, 1921, Gold is coming through Quebec. And well, why is that? Because of the Emergency Quota Act of 1921, which severely limited immigrants arriving into the U.S., but from my research, they were only enforced at Ellis Island, so any other ports of entry were a little bit easier, and that could be reason why they came through Quebec. Now, this is a part of history that I don't really have a good knowledge of. Basically, I have a Googled it and read a couple of different things about it, knowledge of it, um, so I'd love to hear more if anyone has any ideas where they know more history dealing with this law. But we do know that Goldie came in October of 1921 and that Emergency Quota Act was passed in March of 1921. So we're really getting a really good history of, of what the family was going through. They were all slowly trying to get over here to the United States with help through the Wassermans. And I think one of the main reasons why Sam probably had the Wassermans already on the tree didn't necessarily have to do with the fact that they were so vital to the family being able to come over to the U.S., but it's because Minnie and Isaac's son, Lou Wasserman, was such a major part of United States history. Now, I'm not going to get too much into uh, talking about Lou in this video, uh, in this episode. Um, he was... He was famous because of his work in Hollywood, um, specifically working with MCA. And if you Google him, Lou Wasserman, which you can see how it's spelled L-E-W, that um, you can find all sorts of information on him. And so that's an interesting little tidbit that you can know that Sam Arano is a cousin to Lou Wasserman. But now we're going to start to look into Abraham Joseph's wife, Leah. Now, before we talked about how Leia has this last name, Bellets, in another part of the tree, we saw that there's a meta Bellets. And from what Sam told me, his grandmother had told him that they were related. But one thing that he told me was that his grandmother also told him the Bellets name. Now, we saw the Bellets name with meta, and you have to watch the last episode to see that. We saw it in the records. But for Leia, when I did the research, I actually did not find that. So unfortunately here, and it might be because we have Bellitz as a name, she's not coming up. Now for Leia, we know that she came to the U.S. We have the actual manifest record, but she dies in 1929. So she had to have died in Ohio. And from what Sam gave me, there was no information on her death. So we have January 10th, 1929, it's going by her maiden, uh, her maiden name, Leah Bellitz. So let's do a search who died in 1929 in Ohio with the last, uh, with, with the name Leah. So we're going to take a look. Leah death, 1929. Now we know she died in Ohio. So let's see what kind of results we get. We're going to want to actually make that exact because we know we're going to get a lot. And there we go. First thing, Leah Chernick, 1847, January 10th, 1929, and that's at Find a Grave. So let's take a look. And we have a whole lot. And now this actually leads me into um, some good, good information. And then we're going to kind of get into some more. So... For this, we don't have a photo, but this is on a website called Find a Grave. For those who don't know Find a Grave, it's a website where uh, the goal is to put a profile for every single grave of, uh, out there and hopefully get a picture and basically make it a go-to place if you're going to try to find a grave. There are some things that have gone on with Find a Grave recently that a lot of people have not been the happiest about. Um, number one is the uh, use of abbreviating find a grave a lot. Um, 
abbreviated FAG, if those didn't realize, which is something that a lot of people are not happy with seeing or hearing. Um, on top of that, there's also controversy with a lot of people that are adding um, information and photos and graves to find a grave almost immediately as soon as information about that's up. So in a sense, basically putting that information up while the families are still grieving without consulting the families. And so there's a lot of controversy with the website, but it still is a very useful website and um, there's a lot you can get from it. So here we see that someone has already gone through and they've connected. We have Joseph connected here. So there's his grave and we can see he's Abraham, Joseph, uh, Bar Reb Yisrael. Then we see the children. So we have Jenny Shapiro. Jenny, this was, she was the uh, first to come over after um, uh, her sister. Uh, so her fir the first sister coming over was Minnie, who we see here. And um, then it was Jenny. Then after that, then Joseph. And then Israel. And we see Israel bar Yosef. But going back, so we're going to go ahead and save this. And you can see I saved it into the tree where I've, I've already kind of done the work. Um, so we're going to put that in. We're going to do Leia and its bellets. And now that we've added that, now we have some more hints. And so when we pull that up, now we get a death record that was added in by somebody else. We also get um, some, some of the other stuff that uh, we know right off the bat is correct. But... With this death record, we get some different information. And this is where there's some discrepancy and question with what's going on. So we see that we have, um, it's kind of hard to read. It looks like Leon, Rachel, Chernick. Um, it could be Leona, the way they're doing it. The name may be Leia, we're not sure. Uh, residents, we have 839 and a half East 100th and first or 105th street. Uh, we see that the husband's Joseph Chernick. So yes, that matches up. The informant is Joseph Chernick, but then the name here is not ballots. Her father's name is Morris Porfinsky, or at least that's what it looks like. It's very hard to tell, but it looks like Porfinsky. So that's something very new. What's with this Porfinsky name? Because what we have is ballots. Well, the first thing is, can we disprove that this is the same family? One way to do that, let's take a look at this address, 839th and 839 and a half East 105th Street. Well, if that's where they were living, would Joseph still be living there in 1930? So we're going to hop on over to Joseph again, and we're going to see if we can find the 1930 census for him. And, well, there we go, 1930 census. We pull it up. We see he's living with Minnie. And, well, where are they living? 839 and a half um, East 105th Street. I knew it was somewhere there. So it is definitely her. So we know for sure there is a correlation between the address that this is correct. We have the Chernick name. We have the Wasserman family. We even have Lou Wasserman there, age 17. And then we have Joseph there. So this is correct. So we're going to go back. And so we're actually going to edit that. We're going to change that. So we're going to do Porfinsky and Porfinsky. Okay. So now we've added that. But now we have a lot on our plate. So now let's discuss what are the things that we need to think about with this whole new Porfinsky name. Well, first off, we have that it is a family story that, yes, the Ballots were related. This Leia, or who he thought, who Sam thought was Leia Ballots, was related to Meta Ballots. Well, this doesn't necessarily disprove that part. It only disproves the part that they had the same name. Now, could there, there could obviously be something more going on in that they are related and maybe Leia's mother was a Ballots or maybe Meta's father was a Perfinsky. But when I talked to Sam, I specifically asked, did your grandmother mention the names? And he said, yes, she told me the names and that they were related. So that is a question mark. But one thing to always consider with this, and I have run into it many times with dealing with family trees, 
is the unfortunate truth that many family stories aren't exactly what they seem. Or at the very least, sometimes things can get construed. Someone hears a story, thinks that it means something that other than what actually happened, and then that gets passed down. Um, as well, there can be family myths that people kind of come up with, whether it be through doing research and then seeing something and kind of coming to a conclusion and then that getting passed down uh, or just people really wanting different things. So, you know, common myths, especially in American families, the myth of the Cherokee princess or the Native American princess or even just generally the Native American ancestor. Um, in a lot of Ashkenazi Jewish families, there's the myth of having that Sephardi ancestry, um, especially the myths of the Sephardi ancestors migrating to Poland. And then you even have those typical myths of people saying that, oh, well, our family name was changed at Ellis Island. No, it wasn't. No family name was ever changed at Ellis Island. It's a myth. So with all of the information that we have, my idea is that Lay and Meta probably are related in some way. I imagine that the family would have known that based on how closely they would have been connected because I believe it was uh, Meta's son who was marrying a granddaughter of Leia, if I'm correct. I may be wrong in that, but either way, it's about that. Um, somewhere Sam had mentioned that they were first cousins once removed, uh, which is oddly specific, especially that it's not shown connected in the tree. Um, and as far as I know, that what he gave me is everything that he has. Um, but another thing to consider, too, is what is going on with this name. Now, I looked into both names, Porfinsky and Ballots. I looked into them on uh, Jewish Gen, and I looked into them in, um, you know, some other sites like JRoots and stuff. Porfinsky, I don't believe, is the actual name. I think that that is... A name, I think that's what was written down from what the person heard who was writing it down, but I think it might have been something else. Now, I found some names that it might have been. One was Produtsky. Another one that I found, which seemed very possible, was Porovinsky, or sometimes it would be Porobinsky. Um, I did also find a few Borobinskis, but I don't know if that was just like something weird going on. I don't know. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities with that. For the ballot's name, I actually found, and I'm, I'm going to show this. So we're going to go to Jewish Gen. And when I looked up the ballot's name, I, I thought it was going to be a name that really wouldn't turn up much. But when I did it, it actually turned up a whole lot. But when I looked at Lithuania, it had the most. And if we look at the revision list, I noticed that there were two main spellings. There was this spelling, Bellitz, which we're going to do Lexi logo. So for anyone who's not familiar with Lexi logos, this is how you can spell things in other languages that don't use uh, the Roman alphabet um, or use alphabet characters that you don't quite have on your computer. Um, so we have Bellitz. Or sorry, we have. <clears throat> Let's see. So there's Bellitz. And then there's. Bell it's so oh. <laughs> right. So these are the two ways that I found the name spelled in the um in the records. It was either Bellitz or Bellich. Um so as we go through, you'll see a lot of Bellitz and then I believe some Bellic come up. Um nothing that I really could find connecting to his family specifically especially being that there really wasn't anything in his family that connected to Vilnius but the big takeaway from here is that there is a whole lot more work to be done now Sam's tree is very very difficult as are many Ashkenazi Jewish trees um, and I you know I, I didn't want to give too much away as I needed to ask him questions uh, although I did sometimes have the urge of really just wanting to you know give a little hints and stuff um, but, uh, this is the type of thing where it takes a long time to really find for one, a lot of the records aren't digitized yet or are being digitized. So they're not easily searchable. 
a lot of records are missing or have slowly deteriorated or been destroyed over time. And then just that basic issue of the surnames changing and you just never quite know what that original name is, even if it's somewhat similar to what the name is that you think it might be, there's a whole lot of different stuff happening. Now, the biggest thing that I would want to use, and I've mentioned this in a few of the other, of the other episodes, would be DNA. I think there's a lot that could be found through DNA in Sam's family, uh, especially if we were able to utilize things like Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA, but even just typical autosomal DNA tests will be a huge help in research into a family such as this. Now, whether or not that happens in the future, I don't know. I would love to have a future season where we have, you know, DNA to take this even further. Um, and there was a whole lot that I have found outside of what was in these videos as well. So I will be sending Sam a whole lot more than uh, what's being seen here. But for all those who have followed along in this season, I would love to see comments below. What are things that you would do in this research? A big thing with this series is that I'm trying to be very truthful to genealogy and a big truth of genealogy is a lot of times your searches will turn up very little or nothing. And even when it's very little, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to be extremely helpful. We found a lot of little things, whether it be random siblings we didn't have the names of previously, maiden names we didn't see before, dates we didn't have before, Every little bit adds up, and as more documentation becomes available, we can correlate more to everything. Well, that does it for our first season of YouTuber Family Trees. I really do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give this a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. As well, if you'd like to get access to content of mine early, or even better, get access to exclusive content, please become a patron of mine on Patreon. Not only would you be getting a whole lot of fun access to that extra content, but you will also be really helping out the channel and I really appreciate it. I'd also like to thank my current patrons, Jim Vivoda, Suzanne O'Connor, Tan A. Summers, Megan House, Ryan Dale, Sergey Vizulianov, Stephanie Jones, and Shelly Rogers. If you'd like to subscribe, you can click right about here. It's completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.